What is up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This is the place where you get actionable ideas, insight, and inspiration to turn your real estate career into a life of freedom. We've got a couple of, uh, well, we've got one main really fantastic guest today. We've got Jeff Cohn with us, is back for his third appearance on the show. We're talking about how to build a, a lifestyle business, how to build a business that doesn't suck all of your time, energy, and, uh, and just life force in general out of you. We're talking about some specific strategies to uh, to make more money with less time. We've also got Gene Volk be here joining us as always on Fridays for a quick tech tip. So uh, we've got four very high D's on the show with us. Uh, Gene is from the East Coast. Greg might as well be from uh, from the East Coast. And Jeff, I don't know where he's from, but uh, yeah, there's a, a very special place called Omaha where all of us sound like apparently we're all from the East Coast because we're all going to talk fast. So guys, if you can't keep up, find another episode to watch because you're going to get a ton of value out of this one or just take a lot of notes. Greg, the junior grandmaster himself, the speed talker in the co-pilot seat. What's up, Dad? Matt, what's going on, man? I can't wait. I can't wait to be here. This is gonna be so exciting. We got Gene, we got Jeff, we got Matt, it's Greg. It's gonna be amazing. Oh my God. Okay, now I'm gonna slow the fuck down to normal speed. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was straying oh, dangerously that was impressive. Bobcat Goldthwait territory. <laughs> Do you know what that was? You guys remember the tiny micro machines back when yes. we were kids? That mm -hmm. guy would talk like a billion miles an hour. I actually, um, Midori here in the office, she's 25. She had no clue what micro machines were. I dated myself and I immediately felt like a grandfather, you know, in a 38 year old skin. Um, but I don't know about you guys. Happy Good Friday to everybody who celebrates it. We're excited to have everybody here. Um, I have been having a fat day, so I am not the most comfortable right now. I gained fucking four pounds. God damn it. And I'm trying to work out. So don't pick on me. No fat jokes, Matt. Okay, no, I'm sensitive. I'll keep sensitive. it myself. You've been, making, you've been making fun of my fictional wife and three obese kids for the last year and a half, and you put on four pounds, I'm not allowed to say a word? <laughs> yes, it's exactly right, because they don't exist. Their feelings can't get hurt. Okay. All right. Well, first of all, let's, let's welcome the gentleman. Gene will be joining us for just a short time, so Gene, what's up? What's up, boys? How are you? Good, man. What up, and then dude? Jeff Cohn, what is up? What's up, guys? I'm super freaking pumped to be here. I'm actually going to get you guys' feedback. We're in the high D scenario here. Do you like this close to my face, or would everyone prefer it to be off camera? For some reason, it makes me feel really manly to have it here. So <laughs> <laughs> I got a mic stuck in my face. Greg, are yeah. you a fan of the mic in the frame? It's like, look at my fancy mic. How important can I be? You and, you and Matt definitely must be friends. Okay. <laughs> the, other, the other thing is I'm I'm covering something up not because I I have an insecurity. Oh but my now god! That someone else on this hangout looks like me. Yes. I'm leaving the hat off today, man. Yeah, baby. I'm yeah. leaving it off. I'm getting crazy. Bald is beautiful. Oh so my we have god. a fat person to make me feel comfortable and a bald person to make me feel comfortable. <laughs> oh so Matt, god. what are you going to do to make our guests feel comfortable? Because I've contributed. Now you have to contribute. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> He's got a microphone in his face. That's, that's true. Yes, that's right. That's, what, right. Gene, that's what me and Jeff have in common. <laughs> All right, <laughs> right. Oh my God. All right, Gene, what have you what have you got for us today? Tech tip. So listen, first of all, I'm just going to let you guys know how special you are. Uh, if you grew up where I did on the East Coast, it's between 12 and 3 right now on Good Friday. And if my father was around, he would still be making me be silent and cleaning the house. So I'm not really supposed to be talking uh -oh. until 3 p.m. Eastern time. So I hope you appreciate that. We do. Right. And my mom made me do the same shit when I grew up. Like, That's funny. Yeah. She'd take me out of class and make me watch a video and I couldn't talk. I'm like, this fucking sucks. Oh, uh, listen. So here's the deal with you. In, when this show ends, you need to zip that lip for the next three hours. Hey, I'm cool with that, man. I'm good with that. All my appointments canceled on me today. So I'm like, free as a bird, man. I'm going to go work we, we've in my got, house. We've got recording this. to do. We've got some serious video recording to do. So, uh, yeah, Gene, I don't want to hear anything about Greg not talking. <laughs> for for well, once in my life, I'm encouraging Greg to talk. Oh my That's goodness! Mark this date down on the calendar. Put this date out on the calendars. Right. <laughs> um, so here, listen. I'm going to get out of the way real quick. Let me just drop this little truth nugget, and then you guys jump with Jeff and roll. Um, so basically, I, I wanted to take it back to grassroots. This is a simple tactic, a simple trick on Facebook, but a lot of people don't know it exists. Number one or number two, they forget it's out there and they don't tend to it like they should. But when you have a Facebook business page and you have great content and you engage people, they will like, share, and comment on your stuff, thereby showing their world, right? But what a lot of people don't know is if you have a Facebook business page, when you go in to invite folks, you can typically only invite your friends, right? You know how that works? You invite yep. friends and if they're in your circle. Well, if people who are not your friends like, comment, share your 
material, you can actually invite them to like your page, whether you're a friend or not. So what mm -hmm. you should be doing is going back down through your business page, clicking all the likes, and there'll be an invite button next to it, and just invite them. So I'm, I'm always saying that because people always ask me, what are some ways to increase your viewership and increase your likes on your page? There are a couple, but this is one way to do it for free. Over over a, every two weeks or so, go in there, check it, and hit the invite to all the folks who you don't know, and and ge and generate more of a following. Wow, that's a great tip, man. It doesn't cost a dime. It's it's time efficient. You don't have to spend all day doing it. That's phenomenal, man. Wow. My People mind's blown. Their calendars. Jeff, <laughs> 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 no, I, I expect that to be done for the ERS page every two weeks. <laughs> Jeff's like, uh huh. Is, is anybody doing that? <laughs> no, absolutely not. <laughs> That's why we need a twelve dollar hour. I keep telling I you. Definitely, I definitely would not be personally doing that, and it's a great yeah. opportunity, Gene, uh, to talk about virtual assistants. Yeah. Uh, That's a great activity for your VA for eight dollars an hour. Yes, agreed. Absolutely agreed. Hey, Gene, uh, there's a guy that hit me up the, the other day, and he asked me about a tip that you had given maybe a week or two ago uh, about something about how to do social networking, how you can post everything in one place, or how you can do something with one click or something like that. Do you remember what that is by any random chance? No, I'm, I'm, it's probably the tool set that we use, whether it be Revio or Hootsuite, something where, you know, to, when, I, when I coach my clients, I tell them you don't have to sit down every single day and do it. You can sit down on a Monday for two hours and schedule everything out across multiple platforms using a Hootsuite or a Revio. That could have been what he was referring to. Okay. That's probably what it was. Cool, man. I just want to get it back out on the air one more time. All yeah. Right. We, we can talk about that down the road too. Sure. Mm -hmm. And Gene, how do they reach out and contact you and why should they contact you? Well, listen, if you if you don't get out of me right now, why you should contact me, then don't bother calling me, right? Come on, <laughs> come on, man, come on. No, uh, listen, I can There's help you. There's a little bit of Philadelphia coming through. <laughs> and, of course, I'm only half kidding. But uh, <laughs> gvimedia.com is, is our website. You can get me at genevolpe.com or genevolpe at gmail.com or 610-952-1081. Uh, boom. Ooh. Bing, bang, boom. That's all awesome. the phone number. It's a dangerous thing. Call I, it. I, I know. I gave it up for a year and a half. Trust me. No one ever called me. No one ever freaking called me. They, they, what they, was they the number? Me. They picked 915-1978, area code 925, and Jeff's dialing in right now. Da, 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 da. <laughs> auto dial, auto he's dial, gonna, auto he's dial. Gonna <laughs> sick, he's going to sick a thousand calls a day on you. They're just Your phone is just going <laughs> to run off the hook with overseas VAs prospecting you. Oh, oh, I had something horrible to say, but I'm not going to say a damn thing. Um, <laughs> I held back. Yeah, I did held back. I actually, I, I actually was censored. Good Lord, what is wrong with me? It must be All Good right. Friday, so I'm, I'm censored. Slightly. Real estate right. censored. This session is real estate censored, brought to you by Greg. <laughs> by Nash USA. That's right. I don't think I don't think Jesus would want that. So, all right, Gene. So we'll, we will let you go whenever you feel like hopping out. I, I can I can speak. I grew up in church. I feel like I can speak for Jesus on a few things. Oh boy! Well, all right, this is yo, this is where I drop. This is where you drop. All right. Happy Easter. <laughs> Love you, brother. Peace out, bud. See you, boys. All right. So Jeff, let's let's turn to you. So for those uh, for the viewers that might have not caught your first couple of episodes, because oh. it's been a while since we had you on the show. Your first episode was yeah. one of our most popular. It's still one of our most popular videos of all time, uh, where you went over the prospecting scripts and systems to sell 500 homes a year. Since mm -hmm. then, you've topped yourself, and the team sold 601 units last year. Yep. So give people an idea of just kind of where you come from, real quick so they know where you're coming from. Sure. So since I was on the first time, um, I expanded into five different markets, San Diego, Salt Lake, Boston. Uh, we were in Lincoln. And then, of course, we're here for our flagships in Omaha. We've decided to sell all of our expansion markets. Uh, we did not we do not believe that expansion is as successful as a lot of companies make it sound. Uh, but we did start a new product called Flat Rate Expansion, where we're helping agents expand, except we're not taking all the profit from their success. We're just charging a subscription fee of $497 a month. And then we're providing them with 12 hours a month of both training and accountability calls. So that's been a lot of our time and energy. Our real estate team in Omaha, like you just mentioned, went from 500 to 601. We already have sold 250 houses the first quarter in 2017. So we think we're tracking right now to do about 850 sides, 150 Jesus. million in volume and 4 million in gross commission income. That's with a team of 30 agents and about five admin staff. I continue to zero base my marketing expenses as well as my admin fees. So we, we can talk about that strategy a little bit today if you wanted to. And am I talking too fast or is this a good speed for your viewers? No, you're good. You just have, everyone in the audience has commission envy, but that's okay. Commission <laughs> envy. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. That's, that's, no, seriously impressive. Sorry, not sorry. 
<laughs> I'm I'm not gonna be sorry for my for my for my ultra awesome. Success. Don't apologize for being awesome. Rock no Tom way. says that. Don't apologize for being awesome. No, you shouldn't. Yeah. And you want be best besting yourself and continuing to grow is a sign mm -hmm. of success and and being proud of what you do. If you just sat there and stayed stagnant at 500, there'd be no growth. There wouldn't be something to tout anymore. But now you're growing. You put another you know, 101 Greg, homes in. Yep. I it's mean, our goal. It's our goal to never be stuck in a triple digit. So. Uh, when we are at four, we've never been stuck in a triple digit. We've gone from 400 to 500 to 600. Our goal next year is to be do over 700 and stay consistent with that. And you nailed it. It's not about the income you generate. Once you're making over, you know, call it a quarter million a year net, it starts to become more of a game to me. And it's not, a, you know, it's about being the best that I can be, like Gary has on the MREA book, um, not necessarily just the money. And then the influence that you can have on not only eight, the agents that choose to follow you, but also the clients that they serve. And that's where I've intentionally put a lot of my time and energy. Yeah, it really does come to, to a customer service business, and the better you get, the more the more you receive in return. But you're pushing the, the positivity out into the universe first, and showing people that not not every single real estate agent is a complete douche. You know, they're not going to screw you over. Like I, I had this fucking guy, okay? Right. This this guy, I went I was on broker tour yesterday. This fucking guy, I, I walk in. I've never met this guy. And you walk in, and he's like, he's like, send your guy over. Hey man, but I, we won't write the contract without you because we're not that kind of agent. I'm like. Who says that? Oh. Honestly, are oh. you kidding me? Well, I mean, they are that kind of agent. Yeah. <laughs> when someone says I'm not something, they typically are. So yeah. you don't I, need to say it. <laughs> no, I, I immediately told my client, I walked outside, I put him up, I'm like, this is not a good house for you. I don't think this is a good place for you. <laughs> but yeah, that's true, yeah. it's true though. I mean, a lot, when you say it, you definitely, you, have, you don't have to, you don't have to back up something if you're already truly it, right? Yeah. Like the guy driving the brand new Ferrari, <laughs> We we'll live in a one-bedroom condo. Hmm. You know, look at me, look at me. Okay, I'm gonna putz it in, in the back way, right? It's just like you're showboats. <laughs> big I hat, no cattle. We say big hat, no cattle here in Nebraska. Big oh my hat. God, I've been saying that here in California for years. I love what? that saying. <laughs> what? Big mine, no gold. Big mine, no gold. I think that's the California one. Big yeah. mine, no gold. Matt, remember that. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> I was on a session last week talking about ruffling people's feathers because I've deployed this strategy for recruiting and I'm calling essentially and texting and emailing every agent in my market every 30 days. And I said in one of my podcasts, if you're not ruffling feathers, you're not playing with enough chickens. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, I love that. You guys, I'm still laughing about it. It was like a month ago. <laughs> <laughs> Play with enough chickens. Oh, that's so funny. Oh, that's funny. That's oh so God. true, though. That's yeah, so true. I mean, that's it, it. That goes back to you know, kind of the title of what we're talking about today is like how to build a business, a lifestyle business, and how to work less and make more. It's totally true. I mean, that can go right for talking with buyers and sellers or any kind of other lead. If you're not talking enough chickens, you're not going to get it ruffle enough feathers. And <laughs> right. I swear There's to God, I want out there in real estate. I want, anyway. I want our assistant to pull that out. I want Leslie to pull that out and make that Jeff's quote. For the, for the show. <laughs> I'm fine with that. I think it's great. I just love it. Quote, we're it's mine. All that I everywhere. own that. That's awesome. Oh my, thank you for that. You're all welcome. right, Jeff. Well, let, let's get into it. So for, for those, uh, for the agents that are listening that are that are blown away, like they don't have a team or they have a small team, or they're, they're kind of, they're you five years ago. Kind of take us back to where you were at, and then we'll get into some of the things yeah. that, the, the way that you leveraged yourself and how you started down the road to get to where you are today. Sure. So you guys, 2006, I got licensed. Uh, 2007 was my first full year as an individual. I went five years grinding, like probably a lot of your audience members are grinding out today. Always thinking about where am I going to get my next deal, my next buyer, my next seller. Um, servicing a lot of the leads, a lot of the components of the lead from executed to close, taking people on showings, putting signs in yards, doing all this stuff. And I had three children while building my real estate business. Um, I have 11, nine, and seven today. So obviously minus five years ago, they were young and they were um, needing a lot of dad's time, and I wasn't there as often as I wanted to be. And so I started thinking about the type of life I wanted to live, and this is the Lifestyle Podcast today. And so I realized that having having to work, having to have um, necess ha having to be part of a, a wheel essentially was something I didn't want to um, feel like I had to do to be able to generate an income for my family. So I wanted to figure out a way to create a wheel, a business that would run without me needing to be one of the cogs in that wheel. And I could, I realized that my if my business could run without me, I could live the life of my dream while still creating income. And so 2011 was my last full year without having a team. I did about 80 sides. 
and I earned a great return. I made a $350,000 net return that year. So the money was there, but the lifestyle still wasn't. I was still working my butt off. You know, a lot of times you see doctors and dentists and attorneys and people put them on such a high pedestal in our society. But in my opinion, they have to go to work every day to make money. I think the most mm -hmm. impressive person is one that doesn't have to go to work. Maybe they choose to, but they don't have to be necessary in their business to be able to generate revenue. And so I thought when I was 60, if I worked hard enough to build this wheel, maybe in my 60s, I could choose to not have to sell real estate any longer. And so my first hire was an executive assistant or a transaction coordinator. And that was in 2000, um, that was back in like 2008 or 2009 when I hired that position. And so I, up until 2011, I had someone doing my paperwork, but I still was doing a lot of the other activities like showing houses, going on appointments, uh, putting signs in yards, et cetera. My transaction coordinator was just doing my paperwork. In 2011, I realized that I needed to have agents. And to get agents, I thought all I needed to provide to them was leads. And so we launched our Boomtown platform in September. And like I said, at the end of 2011, I did 80 transactions. In 2012, 12 months later, I had hired six agents and we did 240 sides for about $45 million in volume. So anyone listening today that's an individual, there's definitely an, I think, simple path. It's not necessarily easy, but there's a simple path to where you can get leads, teach your people to convert those leads, create a certain commission cut off of the leads you generate to those agents, and your business can essentially triple in size overnight. And that's the experience that I had. And so once I kind of uh, understood the idea behind how people can expand and scale. I just continued to do the activities that I found would help me to be the most successful. And those came came around to culture, creating a culture where people could be successful, training people to be successful, holding them accountable to the things we know help them to be successful, and then continuing to recruit new agents to plug into that system. And that's what took us from 240 to 601 just in the last four years. So question for you, for the average yep. agent that, that's out there, what was what was the mind shift and or book or person that was that catalyst that you said, you know what, I'm done with this bullshit. Right. I'm going to change my life. And then what was the next action you took after that uh, after that aha moment? Yeah, I appreciate you asking that question. That's a really good one. I can't pinpoint one thing. I think that when I got into real estate, I knew my goal was to do work my hardest and learn as much as I could. But I found that while I was working really hard, I wasn't learning enough. Mm -hmm. And the people that make it big learn a lot and apply a lot. And you get to a point where you've learned enough that you don't have to be the one doing everything. You learn to leverage other people. I can run a list of books down. I mean, Rich Dad, Poor Dad had a big influence. Mm -hmm. Robert Kiyosaki said, you don't need to know the best people. Or sorry, you don't need to be the best at everything. You just need to know the best people at everything, which I think mm -hmm. is a really good suggestion. Um, Millionaire Real Estate Agent by Gary Keller. He talks about how to go seventh level where you're netting a million dollars a year and you're not working in the day-to-day -day grind of the business. The One Thing by Gary Keller, um, Seven Levels of Communication by Michael Mayer is another really good one that mm -hmm. teaches on how to build your sphere. And I've used a lot of those strategies in building my uh, sphere beyond my client base, but also my business relationships I've created both locally and, and nationally. And then How to Win, how to in, um, win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Yeah. That was a great, a great one about learning to listen and be uh, more engaged in conversations, which is hard for someone with a high D personality because we want to do all the talking. I don't even want you to ask another question. I just want to keep going for the next 45 minutes. Hey, we'll let you. We just keep it. on trucking. That's all right. But you've got two other Ds here, so we're going to interrupt you and interject. That's great. Let's so do it. Allow, allow me to interject and, and say this, that from, from all the conversations you and I have had, Jeff, it seems like so you, you were very strategic about going into real estate, not because you had the thrill of the deal or because you wanted to wheel and deal and drive a Mercedes down, down a palm tree lined road. You got into real estate because you thought it was the best, it was the best industry that gave you the, a way to express the business that you wanted to build. So you kind of, you, I think you got into it with a very different you're mentality right. than the average person gets into it. Now that, that isn't to say that guys, if you're listening to this, maybe you did get into it because you enjoy the deal. And that's what I want to, I want to talk about next with you, Jeff, is yeah. you're still doing, like you've gotten back into going again on the listing appointments because that's the most leveraged use of your time. And I'll, I'll let you explain why that sure. is, but you don't necessarily have to let go of everything. If you genuinely enjoy real estate, sure. Limit yourself to the parts of it that you do enjoy, but I want to get into the mentality a little bit of how to build the systems that allow you to withdraw from the pieces that you don't like and aren't very good at so right. you can live a lifestyle of stuff that you do enjoy. So let's get into that a little bit, Jeff. Why do you still okay. or why do you go back to and, and now are going on your own listing presentations again? Yeah, so let me answer that in a second. So there's a great book called The Five Dysfunctions of a Team by Patrick Lencioni. 
And he goes into the idea that not all of us might be right in the right seat. We might be on the right airplane, but we need to switch seats so that we can be have the greatest effect on the business that we're trying to grow. I knew intentionally going into real estate, I chose it as my career path because I knew there would be so many options. And I knew that the foundation was gonna be my ability to help people buy and sell residential. But I knew eventually I was gonna invest in multifamily and single family, possibly grow a team, possibly grow a brokerage. I knew that there'd be a lot of opportunity. And that's a lot mm -hmm. of people get in the business with the same mindset. The challenge is we get stuck on this, this revolving wheel and we have to do our 30 deals a year so we can make our $67,000 to barely break even at the end of the year and keep up our lifestyle. But we have to be willing to take one step backwards to take three steps forward. And that could be in the form of paying for some leads or adding mm -hmm. one agent or adding our first admin. That's the, I honestly, to add seven admin tomorrow wouldn't be hard for me. That, that's not scary any longer. The scariest hire I ever had was my second year in the business in 2008 is when I hired my personal assistant. I had netted 96,000 my first year and sold over 50 houses my first year personally. And I took a third of that income and hired a transaction coordinator. I think we've even probably talked about this on this hangout before, but that was the game changer for me because of the results I had. So I took a risk. I believed I'd see success by taking a step back. But the very next year, I was able to, you know, 3x the investment of having that trans uh, transaction coordinator and was able to, in, you know, obviously make more than that position. So you had asked me a question before I got on this tangent um, pertaining to what again, Matt? Uh, why, why you're going on the listing presentation again. Okay. So the idea, I think I drew this idea from the book, The One Thing. And essentially what Gary does in that book is he breaks down our time and what our time is worth right? All of us have the same amount of time, but all of our, our time is valued differently if we want to take it based on what we earned last year. So if you work 40 hours a week and you work 50 weeks out of the year and you made $100,000 net last year, that means your time is worth $50 an hour. And I believed in that concept right when I had heard of it or read it the very first time, and it could have even happened in a finance class in college. And so what I have chosen to do is be very intentional about Number one, understanding what my time is worth. And number two, if there's an activity that I know is going to happen over and over again, that's that I can hire someone to do for less than what my time is worth per hour, then I'm going to leverage that position. So obviously, if you'd made 50 grand last year, that's $25 an hour, and you could hire an admin for 15. If you replace the time that admin frees up with activities that you know generate income to you, your highest income generation activities, then that would be a good way to invest your money. And so that's where I started thinking more focused on as I as I wanted to expand my team, I thought, who would be the key hires I'd need to hire? And I thought, well, I wouldn't show houses anymore. So I'd need buyers agents and I wouldn't go on listing presentations anymore. I'd have listing agents and I'd have a sign runner and I'd have client care specialists and I'd have all these different people that would run my organization. So I have today a success manager that oversees our agents, an operations manager that oversees all of our admin staff. I have people that handle my marketing and the list goes on and on. But you asked the question, why would I go on a listing presentation? So I netted over a million dollars. This is uncensored. So I netted over about $1.1 $1 .1 million last year. And I'm 35 years old. I'm in Omaha, Nebraska. There's not huge sales prices here. Our average is like 180,000. Um, but what I found was if you do about a million dollars, then, then your worth is about $500 an hour. Well, I can go on a listing presentation that is set up by a virtual assistant or an internal sales agent. They set up the time, I show up at the house, I have a listing agent show up with me from my team who I've already partnered with and have a pre-negotiated split where we allow her to keep 25% and I keep 75%. I do a one hour marketing presentation. I, I, I verbally get the seller to agree to list with us at 7% for 12 months. And then I say, okay, well, I'm gonna take off and this is gonna be a listing with, and then I have Cindy from my team take the listing over. So I go on a one hour marketing presentation. When that closes, which right now it's a seller's market, all of our stuff is closing, I'm making an average of $6,000. My cut is $6,000. So on listing presentations, I make $6,000 an hour. That's why I choose to do it is because I'm worth 500 an hour. So any activity that I can make more than 500 an hour doing, I'm willing to do right now because I netted a million last year. If I net 10 million, then my cost is gonna go up and maybe it won't make sense for me to go on that appointment. I also love doing it. So Matt made the point that we should do the things that we love doing. It's okay mm -hmm. doing that. Just you have to be intentional to not do the things you don't love. And I think a lot of us, aren't maybe being honest with ourselves when we think of what we actually enjoy and what we don't enjoy. I don't get paid to do podcasts. I do probably three podcasts a week. I love doing podcasts. I'm not getting paid to be here today, but I love it. So how do I, I'm not necessarily monetizing it. Um, I just like talking to Greg and, and Matt. They're cool dudes.
Yeah, we agree. <laughs> so, so, that's the only thing Jeff said that is true. Yeah. <laughs> First of all, it's all bullshit. Never mind. Uh, no, but it is true, and you get to your level, Jeff, and and everybody hits this level hopefully at some point, which is that you you realize like you start asking yourself like, hey, what would I do if I if I just had if I if money weren't an issue then what would I do? And Greg, you and I have asked that before. We've made this comment before about the show. Like if somebody oh, yeah. dropped a hundred million dollars into either one or both of our laps, we would still, like not only would we still do the show, we'd probably increase the frequency and we'd, oh, yeah. we'd just hang out every day on oh, video yeah. for like three hours it. a day and talk to cool people. Like that's how much we love what we do. Love uh, so that's the goal. It's not like the whole four hour work week thing and all that, as much as I love the book, the message has been misunderstood, which is the goal is to try to minimize the time that you spend working to only the most dollar productive activities. I don't think that's right. I mean, it, no, Jeff, you've done that. You no, just, I totally agree. So like I have people call me out. I've talked on a lot of podcasts. I only need to spend five hours a week intentionally on my Omaha team for it to continue spinning and generating income. Mm -hmm. But I do more than that. Right. So when I say I, I only have to work five hours a week, I still get involved more. And it's because I have a lot of different businesses in the real estate realm. So just even doing this podcast today, I have my Omaha's Elite hat on, but I own a flipping business, a title company. I don't, I won't go on and on. I own 10 companies in and around real estate. And so it's really hard to say, okay, well today, right now in this next 30 seconds, I'm, it's for this business. And this 30 seconds is for that business. Yeah, the point is I'm just doing the things I like. If I don't like it, I'm having someone else do it or we're not doing it at all. And it's a, I, going back to the, your audience and most people in, you know, that are out there working, they're just trying to work to get their next sale. So I don't want to spend too much time talking about where mm -hmm. I'm at today. I really want to bridge that gap of where the audience is at today and how to take that next step. And people ask me a lot of times, like, what was the motivating factor? And you guys, Greg asked me that question. It's the best question is what was the one book? What was the one thing that happened? And there wasn't any one thing. There wasn't like an awakening where I said, okay, it's time now to do this, this amazing thing and create this big, I never envisioned we would be as large as we are today so quickly. I well, didn't think we'd ever be as large as we are, period, to be honest. Well the, with you. well, the reason why, Jeff, because you weren't doing it for the money. Yeah, you were doing it for the money, but it that wasn't the underlying only factor. You're doing it because you like what you do and you're happy doing it, right? Sure, and so Kenneth's absolutely. got a really good question here. He says, well, building a system in a down market, you know, how, how can you do it? How can you keep your people busy? So, I mean, yeah. I know in California, we're in a slower market right now. I mean, it's like wading through quicksand. With, yeah. with lead weights on your feet. It fucking sucks. <laughs> well, yeah, <sighs> we were 2006. I launched, I started my team in 2011. I got into real estate in 2006. I've only known slow markets. And when I say slow, I'm talking buyer's markets, not seller mm -hmm. markets. I'm assuming you're in a seller's market. Is that incorrect? Yeah, we're in a seller's market. I mean, our buyers are, are beating each other up. The sellers right. are taking advantage of them. Then we'll flip flop back over and the sellers are- you're calling that a down market, that's usually an up market, market right? No, we seller. just have we, we have lack of everything. We have a lack of uh, a lack of uh, you know homes to sell. The prices are so high. The buyers don't can't afford it, and the sellers can't sell to go buy something else. So we're kind of just right. it's a circle jerk. <laughs> Everyone's stuck. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> stuck. So happy good feel... Friday, everyone. Craig just said <laughs> circle jerk. <laughs> that happened. I am not a part of that, by the way. I'm in Omaha. That's kind of a California thing, I think. <laughs> Matt, you're part of the California thing now. Uh, and so the Franklin Franklin made, made, the, uh, made the comment about me blaspheming on this show that, that I could speak for Jesus. I, 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 I withdraw <laughs> my earlier comment. Maybe we need to go back to real estate ascension. <laughs> no, I always, that. my wife will talk about God sometimes. And I'll say like, if I didn't want to, don't want to go to church on a Sunday, we go to church every Sunday and I'll be like, you know what? I think God's okay with us not going today. And she's like, you think you can speak for God? And I'm like, <laughs> yes, it's a feeling I have. It's a feeling. I, I just know he's okay with it. It'd be better to stay home and watch football. <laughs> I mean, God wants me to have rest and peace That's in right. my heart. That's right. That's right. And it is the day of rest. Me. So yes. to, be, to be intentional about answering that question, because I hate it when people don't actually address a question, um, right. figure out what's working for the people that are selling property. And so I'll take that back to my experience. So when I first got licensed, I visited with the top 10 agents in Omaha to ask them what they had done to build their successful businesses. And I told them that I would have the number one team within the next 10 years. And they all laughed and patted me on my head. I did it in seven years, but I was intentional <laughs> about knowing where I wanted to go and then being willing. And this is the piece that's missing for a lot of you. Being willing to get the information necessary to have a deployable action plan and then doing it. So there's two parts to that. First, you have to know what to do. And then number two, you have to go and do it. And if you can do both of those things, you're going to be wildly successful. Um, I'll turn my camera right behind us. I have my bookcase and I've got all sorts of books that I've read. Um, that's too deep there of books. There's probably about 75 books in that case. I have another 75 at home. Um, my first year in the business, I spent, I probably read a book a week. 
And then I spent a lot of time intentionally listening to podcasts. I said, I met down, I met with agents single-handedly in my own marketplace. But then when I knew I wanted to launch our team over in, five years later in 2011, I took my operations manager who was at the time my marketing director and we went out and started visiting teams across the country. So we visited over 50 teams all across the US in a two year, per, two year period. And we'd only spend about two or three hours with each, of the, with each of those teams. And I don't share this as a bragging story. I share this to say, you want great results. How much time are you willing to dedicate in yourself? This is a Jim Rohn quote mm -hmm. from 50 years ago where he said, your success will never exceed your own personal development. And there's a lot of agents that I just don't personally feel like they're putting enough effort into personal development. They want all the success to come and they see other people succeeding at a high level. But those people that are succeeding at a high level have probably put in more effort than maybe they choose to let on. Most of the people I know that are wildly successful are crazy about the thing that they're successful in. So they have the yeah. most knowledge, the most experience, they're the best at it, and they are all of those things for a reason. So find your reason, find your way to the question that you ask. Find your way to be successful in a down market. There's always ways to be successful in real estate. And if you're not finding that way, you're being, I, in my opinion, you're being lazy because there are people having success right now. So go figure out how to do it. Yeah, there really is. I mean, who's the guy who uh, misread the uh, Miss America con uh, pageant? What was his name? You guys know what I'm talking about? Steve yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, Steve Harvey. Um, yep. You know, he had one of my favorite quotes on planet Earth and talks directly to what you're talking about, Jeff, to the fact of, you know, if you're walking around, you see all these other people with great, you know, successes and they're taking trips to Paris and France and they're going to the Bahamas and everything else. They're driving great cars, great businesses. Well, the reason why those people are successful is because they went and they jumped off the cliff with their parachute right and you know what their parachute's not going to open up right away you're going to bang around you're going to get bashed against rocks it's going to be gnarly at times you're going to get bat battered and bruised but your parachute will open if you fully 100 percent commit you might go down to your last dollar but damn if you put the work in it will open up well, but there's also another yeah. guarantee if you don't jump your parachute will never open and you will always sit on the sidelines and you will always watch everybody else have what you want because you're unwilling to do what they did. Jeff committed, Jeff executed, Jeff has received the results from his hard Greg, work. You opened up my mind. I remembered one of the books that motivated me. Which one? It's a deep one. I don't know if this audience can handle it. Maybe it we should sell this recommendation for $9.99. Okay, let's do this. Matt? Um, <laughs> <laughs> it is the five regrets of the dying. Ooh. And in the book, it talks about exactly what Greg just said. And there were about a hundred different people that this nurse helps through hospice to watch, you know, essentially until the day that they pass away. And she narrows all of their regrets into five main categories. One of them was was not pursuing the life of their dreams, not pursuing it out of fear, out of um concern that maybe their parents or friends expected them to live a certain lifestyle. That was a huge motivating factor to me. I didn't want to be 75 and look back at my life and say, man, I should have taken that risk and gone and become a real estate agent or invested in Jimmy John's or whatever it is. And so to this day, I've chosen to honor myself and to respect myself enough that I will do everything that I'm challenged to that I want to do. So like last year, I was asked to dance in Omaha's Dancing with the Stars. I don't know if you saw that video, Greg. Oh, I think you didn't we did. enjoy. We did. Oh, oh okay. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Are you kidding so, me? I wouldn't pass up that, that dude, opportunity. <laughs> I'm not a dancer. I know there's a lot of 300-pound dancers out there, but um, I don't happen to be one of them. And I, I went up on a stage in front of 4,000 people and threw my stuff around. And I didn't do it because I enjoy doing that in front of 4,000 people. Um, I did it because I was out there supporting a, a, a charity that raises money for sick kids. And I was not choosing about, to live not about the sick. Right. Kids. You're, you're pushing yourself to do what is uncomfortable because that's what you've done. That, that is and what that's I was why you're successful. I didn't want to say yes, but I chose to do something uncomfortable. So I found mm -hmm. that you you don't grow in comfort stage. You grow in pain stage. So I want to go back to Brett's comment about, you know, the, the, the parachute that's popping open. What I've experienced personally is even if the dude hits the ground and the parachute doesn't open. <laughs> that might be a bad analogy because they die. Let's not die in our scenario. <laughs> but even if you file bankruptcy and, or put all of your stuff on a credit card and you your business didn't work, that is a huge win because you now no longer have to have the regret of not trying. Yeah. So I would, so I would say to everyone, if you don't know if a certain lead, lead generation tool is going to work or another business you're wanting to invest in, you don't know if it's going to work, research as much as you can on what's the best way to do it. If Greg's already here and Matt, Matt's here talking to you about strategies that work, do what they're saying you should do. Put it on a credit card, spend $10,000, throw the hat over the fence and go do it. And then in a year from now, see what the result was. If it worked, it was a win. If it didn't work, it was a win. 
Mm -hmm. The only thing you lose is some money and some time. And that's not that big of a loss. I yep. would rather do it and not have the regret of not doing it. Yeah, but everybody's so tight. They're so fear-based mentally that they can't get over the fact of getting out of their own way. But once guys, have you ever asked if you're a girl or a guy, I mean, you ask the other per, the, an attractive other person out for a date or something like that, and you need that, you're, you're fearful, but then all of a sudden the other person turns around, they smile at you, you have a good conversation, you go out, and it's a great, a great opportunity to meet someone new, and then it blooms. You know, that's an incredible opportunity. I did that uh, last year. I took a, a big risk. I jumped on an airplane. Went to the other side of the country, never met this individual, got off the plane. She and I had a great time, and I would have regretted that my entire life if I did not get on that plane. Can we get more so, details? We will off air. <laughs> <laughs> so, dude, this is a great story. In high school, I had a crush on a, on a girl. She ended up she, – she was amazing, right? Like the cheerleader, top, top of everything, amazing gal. Um, about a year after my crush, I was dating someone and we were sitting together in the high school auditorium. And I say to this girl, I was like, I used to have a crush on you last year. She's like, I had a crush on you all last year. And I'm like, <laughs> what? I'm in a relationship now. Crap. So like, I was too scared to tell her and the whole time she was feeling the same way. And I had no idea. I was a stupid, naive kid. I didn't know how to read the, read the cues, but it's a great story you shared. And I agree. We're our, own, or we're our own worst enemy. And the, the fear factor is the reason we're not making choices, if we want to get real crazy, we're, un, we're uncensored here. The real reason we're not making these choices to take risks is because we don't have enough confidence in ourselves that if we fail, that we can emotionally get through it. Mm -hmm. When you believe in yourself enough that when you fail, you can chalk it up to a learning experience, you can do anything. But when you're so scared of who you are, that you don't know who you are well enough that you're not okay with making failures or taking steps back, that's your own um, dysfunction, your own limiting belief. And once people can overcome that, I think that they can be much more successful. So get comfortable in your own skins and take some risks, you guys. Yeah, there's there's a there's a phrase from the book Outwitting the Devil by Napoleon Hill, which me and Greg have both been going through. Great book. That yep. book is amazing. Uh, it's amazing. Seriously, it's a great I mean, book. I got underlined half the freaking book. But one of the things that the uh, that the, the in air quotes devil uh, says to Napoleon Hill in that interview is is that fil uh, failure is one of my greatest weapons or tricks, because rare is the person that can fail two or three times and come back and give it another try. It's mostly that failure, especially the second or third failure, if I can just get them to fail a couple of times, he said, they'll start to drift. He said, and mm -hmm. I'm going Because there are so few, I think it was something like two out of a thousand, every two out of a thousand will oh, two out of fail, some, something like that. But yeah, 98% of people will, you know, they'll fail once and they might be able to pick themselves up. But if they fail that second time or that third time, they're Jeez, done and they're, that's great. They're, they're out of the race. That's a great quote. You know, I think about VAs, yeah. We started um, a call center at my office five years ago, and I had about five or six college kids making calls. We failed through a lot of different people, decided to go virtual, failed through a bunch of different virtual assistants. I've probably gone through now 20 or 25 different callers, and now today I own a call center with over 50 full-time virtual assistants. So I had to fail like 27 times where the universe was saying virtual assistants don't work, virtual assistants don't work, virtual assistants don't work. I now personally use six full-time VAs and have a call center with over 50. Well, so you know, the, the reason why people aren't getting the leads is because, you know, 80% of their business lives between the fifth and the 12th contact. So, Matt, back to the, you know, you know outwitting the devil, you stop at three, you're too shy of just getting in the damn game. Yep. <laughs> you know, you got to keep going. Jeff, you per persevered we, right through all the bullshit. Matt and I, we have a, a program, you know, called Rockstar, you know, Rockstar Prospecting right now. Didn't quite do what we would hoped it was to do. And then, through that, Matt and I, you know, I, I got pissed at him. He got pissed at me one Friday, which is very unlike us. And I went home and I, just like you, Jeff, you know, I'm like, fuck, I can work through this problem. And all of a sudden, right. I'm like, this isn't a problem. This is an opportunity. Right. Holy shit, the universe is telling us something. Let's give it what it wants. So we came up yep. with our new, our new, uh, our new, our new uh, 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 product called Get Business Now. And there's no door knocking and no cold calling involved. And Matt and I put together an extensive system on how to do this, and it was all born out of failure. Yep. Awesome. Great story. That's a great, really good example. You know, awesome. and people get so afraid of it. So you, Jeff, back to your point earlier in the show, you were talking about, you know, where you, you, you're in your comfort zone. You're basically either you're going backwards or you're dying. One of the two, if you stay in your comfort zone, there's three zones. I talk about this a lot. There's your comfort zone. There's your stretch zone and your stress zone. Hmm. Your stress zone is when you do something you've never done before or you're afraid of doing and you don't know exactly how to do it. But you throw yourself out there and you say, screw it, let's do it. 
you know, to quote, quote Richard Branson, you know, let's, I'm going to go out and just do this thing. Right. Guys, if you put the time in, you're going to migrate back into your stretch zone. You want to live in your stretch zone, not your comfort zone, your stretch, because you're not fully comfortable, but you're not freaking out, but you're always growing and moving forward. So what is that for you? Once you identify your stretch, then you can grow. Then you can get to Jeff's level. He did it in seven years. Can you do it in six? I mean, honestly, push yourself. Find, call Jeff. You know, he'll, he'd love to talk to you for hours at a time. You hours. Know, and, <laughs> hours upon hours. Here's my cell phone number. Ready? That's right. <laughs> but find mentors but that true, but it goes to building if you really want to build a lifestyle business which is a business where it's limited to the parts that you really enjoy i think that there's a very i'm trying to remember who said this um it was cal newport i think it was in the book uh deep work and, and he's, he's mentioned this theme in other books but the point his point is that did something very very good which is that if you want to have like a, a business or a life that's limited to the things that you really enjoy, what you have to develop is a rare and valuable skill set. Mm -hmm. It has to be rare and valuable in those, mm -hmm. in, in those two things. And Jeff, you've got this rare and valuable, we've got a couple of them, but you have a rare and valuable skill set first as an agent, mm -hmm. right? But then you had to, on top of that, it, it wasn't enough just to keep doing more of what you were already doing because you inevitably hit that ceiling, which for most right. agents, you know, two to 300 grand for some it's 100 grand in other words like everything that you were doing within what became your comfort zone wasn't enough so then you had to develop another rare and valuable skill set which was the ability to build out a systematic lead generation kind of this wheel this wheel that right. just keeps on turning then you had to build the rare and valuable skill set of bringing on and leading agents to run at the, to be cogs in that wheel right so that, like if you want to build it a just lifestyle, keeps happening it's that yeah, it's that process of solving yeah. that problem over and over again of how do I build a rare and valuable skill set that I can apply. But the key the key thing I think here for people to realize is it's if you make that shift of it's not just building a rare and valuable skill set of something that I do myself. The real the real challenge is to build the rare and valuable skill set of leading other people to do things that are also rare and valuable mm -hmm. and helping them that's build exactly that right. valuable skill set. So that I mean that Jeff, that's where you're that's where your genius is. That's the difference between you making 300 grand as a super successful agent and making a million and beyond. Right. Yeah. Nope. You I know, think you nailed it. I agree. So there's two stories that I want to share really quickly. A no. number of years ago, my father, my shush, shut up. <laughs> um, um, a number of years ago, my father, my brother, and our family, we all started a, a, a company, a predictive analytics company. And we were the first one on the market. We had the patent to the predictive analytics, um, you know, in residential space. And it, we got, we got fucked hard by another company that came in, swooped in, copied us and everything else. It literally destroyed uh, relationships. It almost destroyed my family. My parents were arguing and fighting over money. My, you know, they went down to almost nothing. My brother had to move away because my, their relationship was so bad with my father. And, you know, seven years later, they've come back around and they may have, they, they are working on the same project and they're on the cusp of changing this entire industry with some stuff that's amazingly powerful in regards to prospecting. But they stayed true to it. I mean, I can't tell you the epic heartache and failure that my family went through. My dad put over a million dollars of his own money into this thing. And I mean, he's all the investors are writing all the losses off. I mean, it's killing him inside, but he stayed true. We're a dog fart away from making this thing a reality and making an epic success. And it's like when I, and, and that's just staying true to it for seven years of failure. Nothing but failure, 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 failure. And they're gonna, th this thing is gonna work. It's gonna be absolutely epic and amazing. I'll tell you guys later down the road. But like me, when I came out of college, fat and hairy, you know, had no work ethic at all. And what I do? My dad made me go door knocking. It was horrible. I hated it. I got to lose a couple pounds. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, 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 going through those trials and tribulations, now I've been able to create a unique and specialized skill set, which then I can now pass on to other people, how to cold call, how to prospect, you know, farm digitally or geographically. And I didn't see it when I was going through the hardship. So when you guys are going through a hardship right now in life, you know, personal, business, relationship, whatever it is, don't view it as a hardship, view it as a learning opportunity. You're in school, player. Yeah. You are getting yeah. an education you couldn't pay for. One thing you I want to say, one thing I want to say to that is right now, my job, I have 10 companies. I don't, I am not necessary in the day to day to any of the 10 businesses. 
The role I play is problem solver to the biggest pain points of all of the businesses. Mm -hmm. So that spot that I always tried to stay away from year one, I'm just trying to find buyers and sellers that want to buy and want to sell and service those deals. I didn't want to do things that were hard. I tried to, like a lot of agents, try to do that in the least amount of time with the least amount of effort and get the greatest return on my investment. Today, I have strategy meetings with all of the direct reports of all of the businesses I own on a weekly basis. So Monday is the only day I truly would have to work if I chose to, to be intentional about the strategy meeting. But my why, I was actually doing some, some coaching sessions with Greg Harrelson. Um, he was a friend of mine that I mastermind with who has the number one, uh, one of the top real estate teams in Myrtle Beach, I think number one brokerage, one of the top 10 brokerages in the country. They did 2,300 sites last year. And he asked me what motivated me. And I didn't know necessarily one answer. I was like, you know, there's a lot of the answers I could give. And I kind of broke it down to helping teach people to overcome obstacles. And just like you guys, Matt, I feel like both Matt and Greg, you guys like helping people overcome challenges mm -hmm. that they're facing in the real estate business. I'm now taking that into um, all of the businesses from an entrepreneurial standpoint. I love overcoming obstacles. I'm placing myself in the most awkward, uncomfortable, challenging mm -hmm. situations because that's where I get that's where I get the biggest um satisfaction is to try to help people overcome challenges that they're facing. Um, yeah. And you can do that anywhere. So it's like, well, if you're going to already be doing that, helping your customers that you're servicing, why not teach agents how to service customers and keep a small percentage of the sales that they do? And then you can continue to scale that and build that. And like you guys pointed out, I mean, I was a single individual agent five years ago. So to think about where I've come in five years, the experiences I've had, and you talk about lifestyle, uh, my lifestyle is totally different than it was five years ago. I'm the guy in the brand new Ferrari now that you think lives in a condo. <laughs> I don't live in a condo. So. <laughs> and smack. And yes. boom. Uh, well, you bring up now, are you sitting and still? I, I, wanted to, I wanted to bring up this model. So it's funny, Jeff, that you brought his name up because uh, we talk about this on, on his podcast, the Level Up podcast. But he, I think he has a great model for how to build a, a lifestyle business and, because it can take you wherever you want to go, where, whatever lifestyle means to, means to you. So it's number one, leverage your skills. Jeff, you did that by becoming the best agent you could handling every part of the transaction first before you ever right. expect to be able to coach anybody else. Number two is you leverage with technology and automation, which you did by figuring out, going through the pain of yeah. figuring out Google AdWords. Hundreds of hours of setting Hundreds of up. hours and tens of thousands of dollars. Some of Drip your own, emails. Some mm -hmm. So you leverage with technology and automation. Number three, you leverage with people. Mm. Yep. And that's, and that's the key is, and it's best to do it in that order. And Jeff, you had an experience when you first tried to expand into bringing agents on, when you first had kind of dipped your toe into oh, yeah. the online lead generation game and found out the hard way, right. uh, how hard it is to leverage with people. Right. That, I had done it. I did it backwards. So mm -hmm. I had the leads coming. I had the technology piece. Um, so I thought, I thought, Hey, I have the leads. Let's start adding agents. But I didn't have the systems behind how to coach the agent, train the agent, hold them accountable, um, pick the right people. And we actually have no one today. From that first year in 2012, where I went from 80 to 240, none of those agents are with me. But the whole next hiring wave, I have tons of those people that are still with me because we started being more intentional about how to hire and who the right hires were and what we really represented. We didn't know what we were. And I want to tell everyone listening, that's okay. I like to talk about from stage, I'll tell people, build your own Disney. Your team is exactly what you want it to be. It's an mm -hmm. extension of you. It can be whatever you want it to be. These guys get on and talk about certain strategies. I talk about strategies. So do the other hundreds of people when you do a Google search about any one topic regarding real estate. What I took from all the visits I made, the 50 different visits across the country, was that no one did it one way. Mm -hmm. Everyone did it a different way. And I met a lot of people making over a million dollars a year. But it came back to the basics that Matt just shared. It came back to lead generation, a system that people could plug people into, picking strong agents that are going to be strong within the, the environment that they're in. Usually it was a strong culture, a uh, culture that was supportive and helped each other and was progressing and learning. And you start putting those pieces together and lights out. I mean, you create a, a wheel that can continue to expand as large as you want to go. Can you come to California and help me hire? Because I have done it so bass backwards. It's not even funny. God. Systems. Matt, oh, yeah, systems I know $500 an hour. Sure. It's That's five right. bucks an hour. No problem. I, I can afford you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Jeff, uh, tell people a little bit about uh, flat rate expansion. Yeah, cool. So um, our idea with expansion originally was that we would go out and we'd pay for leads in other markets and we'd partner with people and they would take our elite name. And we went that road for about a year and we found that it, it, it you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Meaning if the team makes it, there's no incentive for them to stay with you and they leave you and take all of your 
you know, intellectual property. And if they don't make it, you're out about $50,000 a year and hundreds of hours of time. So we thought, why don't we do best of both worlds? Let's just charge a fee. So we have a, a flat rate fee of $497 every month that we charge. And we help agents across the country, single agents, teams, and brokers expand their business and take it to the next level through a weekly training call Wednesdays and Fridays. So we have two hours of training on a Facebook live feed just like this, where people can live interact with our trainers here in Omaha at our flagship team. And then they'll have an ac access to the recording of that session just like this on our private Facebook page. And then every Thursday, we hold an accountability call with all the team leaders, individual agents, team leaders, and broker owners that are with our product. And that's also recorded. So it totals 12 hours of content uh, for 497 bucks. It's the least expensive coaching in the entire industry. And we also make available to anyone that buys the flat rate expansion product um, access to our video series of our team building workshop that we host every month here in Omaha. We created an eight hour video of our workshop that you get for free. And we also give you access to our Google Drive that we sell for $1,000, which houses all of our intellectual property. As a flat rate client, you get that for free as well. Jesus, that sounds like a deal and a half. <laughs> it's a pretty good deal. Yeah. Pretty <laughs> and good then, deal. And then, and, and then there is. And if you wait, and you get two right. with free right. shipping. If you do yeah, it for the next 20 minutes, you sign up. And you, the clock right. ticks down on the, on the screen. So you, you talk about being intentional and building a business that can scale. If you want to build single expansion teams, a lot of people talk about that right now. You might have two or three. I haven't seen very many people. On, I'll count on less than a hand how many people have more than 10. But if I talk flat rate, I can scale that a lot bigger and have a greater influence to help other people like our audience here on the call today have more success faster. Some of the strategies like just even like the zero basing marketing costs through marketing service agreements and charging broker fees to cover admin costs and all sorts of strategies around recruiting. Maybe Matt will consider joining um, listing presentations, list uh, generating listing leads, lead conversion. I mean, every month we have a topic that I go big picture on for 90 minutes. And then my success manager, Andy, who holds the groups accountable, he'll go, he goes even deeper into that subject. So the feedback's been great. We actually launched this privately in January in beta form, and we just are taking that public this week. So we're starting to fill group number two. So if someone listening wants to get on board in the second group, I think that we're gonna have over 100 clients uh, organically in the first year. Would love to have you jump aboard. That's awesome. Love you it. guys should. I mean, you obviously get a lot of value from just talking here and Jeff talk for an hour. I mean, why don't you guys go go get jump into the you know into the pond instead of just mm -hmm. dipping your toe into the pond? Well, I mean, follow Jeff's lead. That's exactly what he did. You see where he is now. Why one thing I would do that? as well, if you're real sit on censored um, audience members, and I think you guys probably have some sort of way to verify that they are, I could create a real estate uncensored group for flat rate expansion. So all of the people in your group will be from Real Estate Uncensored. Mm -hmm. So I think that, that would works. be pretty cool too. Yeah, that'd be yeah, great. You can, just, uh, you can do that with basically just a minimum of like five people, right? Yeah, we'll need about 12 people minimum. 12, okay, gotcha. All right, so that is, uh, so all the information on that guys is on EliteRealEstateSystems.com uh, and then, um, uh, guys, if you have any questions about that, of course, you can reach out to me and then Jeff, they can potentially set up a call with you as well. If they're really, yeah, if they're just email me. About it, yeah, just uh, so yeah. it's um, uh, Jeff at elite real estate systems.com is the best way to get a hold of you for that. That's it. Shoot me an email. Uh, yeah. So la last thing I wanted is just to uh, quickly chat about, uh, you mentioned going out to see all these other teams and stuff like that. So I'm curious kind of what, how did you look at that in terms of like seeing all these different models? It basically allows, I was thinking about this the other day, like just like what is a model? Like what is a mm. business model? You know, to me it's like a business model is like all the extraneous details kind of removed and you get down to the bare bones. Okay, like how is your business structured? And it allows you to very quickly get onto that and almost like try it on like a pair of pants to see if it's something that you would want to do. That right. seems to me, I mean, you've, you've gone and seen 50 other teams. You have to see a bunch of other business models. Does that, does that right. resonate That's like exactly that right. idea of looking at models? Yes. And what's interesting is I don't know if you've ever seen, I don't know what they're called. Uh, here I go on trying to explain this, but you'll see like these three boxes that are stacked and they make a mailman. But when you spin it, there will be like an alligator or there will be, you know, a plumber and you can play with each of the boxes. So it's kind of funny because the legs of one is matched with the body of one is matched with the head of one. So when I went on these trips, it wasn't to look at the overall model. Usually it was to answer an area of pain that we were experiencing. So I would go find the team that was doing the best at generating leads. And then I had a problem with lead gen, or sorry, lead conversion. So I went and visited the team that did the best converting the leads. And then I was having a recruiting problem. So I met the team that was doing the best with the recruiting. So I intentionally was visiting the teams that were going to solve the problem that I was experiencing because I gotcha. couldn't read about it because the solutions in books are too broad. 
Mm -hmm. I didn't find very many specific solutions and the podcasts weren't talking about the things I wanted to talk about and they weren't going deep enough. So I thought, you know what, why don't I just call the people that are already doing it that have proven systems that they've put in place. And then I started piecing together all of the components that matched my Disneyland and took mm -hmm. them and applied them. But I was willing to take the steps backwards. I made a lot of mistakes. I'm continuing to make mistakes today. If I'm not failing, I'm not moving forward which kind of is a backwards way to think about it. We've already addressed that today, but that mm -hmm. was my biggest takeaway. I never paid anyone for a visit. Everyone gave me, a, opened their doors to me, allowed me to come in, look at their team. Everyone's really transparent. People that are successful have an abundant mentality. Yeah. Most people that are successful are going to say, yeah, come check it out, come visit. So yeah, they, they really are. I mean, they'll give you the shirt off their back because they don't, they want you to become better. So if any, if, if they were able to do a deal with you, they know that they, that they were doing a deal with a smart agent, but they also want to see you grow. Cause so I guarantee you someone reached out to them. Like Jeff, you're successful exactly. because 50 people reached out to you and showed Hundreds you the way. People. Yep. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just unbelievable. It's just the cycle perpetuates itself. As long as you guys are willing to hack and can sack up and go out there and actually be vulnerable for a minute and be like, Hey, Jeff, you know, dude, I really need to, I need your help, man. You know, right. I, I, I can't do, or I'm not doing well enough in this area. Yep. And then Jeff goes, sure. You know, right. here's a, here, here's the time I can talk with you. Let's knock it out of the park. Let's get here's, you set up. Here, here's a story. Stuff. Here's a, here's a question, Greg, in your marketplace, you're obviously a, a rock star agent. People know you, they know you're successful. How often does an agent in your area ask you to lunch to pick your brain about being a successful realtor? Sure. That's my exact experience. I have the number one team in Nebraska. I sold 600 houses last year. In the last 10 years, I might have had three agents, three, reach out to me. I know the three. I can think of them right now who've reached out and said, hey, Jeff, I want to take you to lunch. And why mm -hmm. is that? It's I, What are they thinking? Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm little, shocked. They're probably on this podcast right now. Dude, call me. I'll take you to lunch. You yeah. pay. <laughs> I'll pick the place, <laughs> but you're getting, we're going to lunch, man. And I'll, and I think people are worried that I wouldn't share with them because they're in my own marketplace. If anything, mm -hmm. I'm going to overshare because it's going to mm -hmm. scare you and you're not going to want to do it after I show you how hard you're going to have to work. Yeah, Dude, that's right. That's right. I was that's that's the place. other dirty little secret reason of why super successful people don't have a problem opening their books and sharing is because they don't really believe that you're going to put it into action. Most no, aren't I, going to. Dude, I was the head trainer trainer for my company for three years. I opened up the kimono and showed them all, all the goodness. Dude, they never – they <laughs> I was just dying. Let's um, be very clear on oh this. Oh, my gosh. That Greg was not wearing a literal kimono. This was no. part of the trip you were just talking about a couple minutes ago, right? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> No, but I just really did. I opened up and I showed everything. I mean, systems, protocols, scripts, everything in my training. I didn't hold, I didn't held nothing back, literally zero. Right. I, maybe, maybe 1% actually did it and, may, and, and then they quit. I mean, it was, right. it was unbelievable. So right. don't be that guy. Don't be that gal. Yeah. Take advantage of the people around you. For yeah. fuck's sake, people. Don't, so guys, guys, you don't, don't bitch while you're not successful. Stop bitching. Amen, brother. You're dead on. So I have a workshop that I'm going to plug right now. And what I did is I took all this knowledge I had created and all the success we've had here locally. And I create, I opened my doors to agents across the country once a month. Uh, we have a workshop coming up on May 5th and May 6th. And then we're going to have some events in June and July as well. You can check out our website to get the information. But what it is, is a full day workshop for your clients. If you're a real estate or sorry, people listening through real estate uncensored, we'll discount any workshop that we host 50% off. They're normally $29.97. We'll give you a $1,500 discount. You'll just use the half off code. It's one slash two off. And we'll allow you to come in into our doors for 1500 bucks. With that, you get the Google Drive for free, which is a thousand dollar value. You'll get access to a private Facebook community of other people that have also paid $1,500 or $3,000 to attend our workshop. And we'll also talk to you a little bit more about flat rate expansion when you're here. It's a full day of where we, we take all of our experience over the last 10 years and unpack that in eight hours. So we'll get into culture, leads, accountability processes, and strategies of building a successful team, as well as the operations component, admin component, and success manager component. So it's huge value add. Also, Greg McDaniel, I'd love to invite you to come to my event for free. And maybe if you let your guests know when you are coming, we could kind of co-market some type of a mini workshop the day before um, for all the people that are followers of you. So I think that I, might be fun. I am in like Flynn, bro. 
I would love right. to come out there and see this thing. Matt, we'll schedule it up. We'll make it happen. We'll make an announcement. Let's get, let's get, let's do a get together and have a hell of a good time. A lot of laughs and a lot of learning. Uh, Annie, the scripts are right above you in a link I just put in there. You can go download the script book right there. But Matt, we're over bingo, brother. Because we, we have are over bingo. Time. And, and we've, we've mistakenly not, uh, not can, like plugged anything for our own. So guys, just follow us on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, connect That's with awesome. Jeff. You can connect with Jeff on Facebook as well. Jeff Cohn. You can connect with me yep. uh, through Pursuing Results. Uh, Greg is Greg McDaniel. He's the one uh, with the uh, red shirt and hat. Yeah, follow. follow. I got, I got Stop. you. Stop I didn't friending. Say Stop I said friending. connect. connect. No, but, but Facebook connect. gave me a warrant, a shot over the bow yesterday. I said, Greg, you have 971 uh, friend requests waiting. You only get 1,000. You might want to start deleting right. people. Follow oh, me. Guys, don't. Uh, yeah, follow me. Do not friend us, follow yeah. us. Thank you, Greg, for reminding us of that. And make sure to go check out our website, reuncensored.com. Guys, we're going to be doing a lot of work to that. There's a lot of cool stuff coming down the pipe. Mm. We've got our uh, our show producers coming on with us uh, and stepping up and even working even more hours with us going into the salt mines <laughs> to help you guys get more content and more good stuff from us, uh, getting it out of our brains and onto paper and onto video where you guys can actually benefit from it. So, guys, we've got uh, some great episodes coming up. Until then, enjoy the weekend. Enjoy Easter and uh, peace out. Yeah. Later. Peace out, ninjas.